his disciples, of course, but that applies to us as well, that it's been given us to know the mysteries of God. Right. His word is revealed to us, and the truth of his word is revealed. Amen? Amen. All right. Jesus often used parables, which are illustrations to reveal the truth. His parables contain fresh teachings or mysteries concerning the kingdom of God. The disciples was privileged then, just as we are today, to know the truth of the parables. I want to read verse 10 from the Living Bible. It reads, this is Jesus speaking, it says, God has granted you to know the meaning of these parables. For they tell a great deal about the kingdom of God. But these crowds hear the words and do not understand, just as the ancient prophets predicted. He said, listen, it's been given us, the disciples, to know and understand what God is saying. Right. But people that are outside the church, and even some religious people, right. they don't understand it. Why? Because their minds are clouded. They're blocked right. from hearing the truth. Amen? Amen. Now, on occasion, a parable was understood by an outsider. Those and are those who by, who was bound by religion, but were not accepted by them. However, it had the same effect on the one who understood the parables as it did on the one that didn't understand. Mm -hmm. The one that understood the parable and rejected it, it had the same effect on the one that didn't understand it. Meaning that even if they understood what Jesus was saying and they rejected it, it didn't benefit them at all. And just like us today, you can know the truth, you can understand what the word is saying, but if you reject it by not acting on it, right. it won't benefit you. Right. You got a lot of people know what the word says and is not getting results because they're not doing what the word says. That's right. Knowing is the beginning, but doing brings the results. That's right. Amen. Yeah. James said we have to be more than just hearing, we have to be doers of the word. That's right. So you can know what the word says, you can understand what the word says. But until you do what the word says, you're not going to get any results. Amen? You got to yeah. that? Amen. All right. I'm checking with you now. Now, Jesus explained the parable that he just talked about by first revealing that the seed sown was the word of God. Look at verse 11. Jesus said, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Of God. Right. Now, in this parable, the farmer's goal is to get as much seed as possible to take root. Right. So therefore, Jesus said, the seed here is the word of God. Mm -hmm. His purpose and goal in using this illustration was to get the people then and us today to understand that we need to get as much of the word of God uh, to take root in our hearts as possible. Mm -hmm. We need to get as much of the word of God to take root in our hearts as possible. Because that's where your victory is at, is getting that word in. That's, right. that's why, why do you think Jesus was so victorious against the devil? He had the word in it. That's right. When he was tempted by the devil, he didn't slap the devil. Mm -mm. He didn't even zap the devil. Mm -mm. <laughs> he just spoke the word to that's the devil. And he defeated the devil yeah, through speaking the word. That's how we defeated it. In right. every circumstance that comes about, if, if it's sickness, if it's light, whatever it is, you speak right. the word to that situation the word. and you get victory. Oh, yeah. I know it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to understand how powerful words are, but that's where the victory is yeah. at. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death that's and life right. is in the power of the tongue. Right. Jesus right. said in Mark 11, 23, you have what you say. That's right. So whatever right. circumstance you are in, you need to speak the word over that, but you can't speak the word if the word is not in you. That's right. Amen. 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 All right. Now, the four different grounds that the seed fell on represent different conditions or readiness of the heart. All right. The different conditions or readiness of the heart produce different responses to the word of God, or we can say produce different levels of faith application. The first condition that Jesus revealed was the wayside. Verse 12. Jesus said, those by the wayside are the ones who hear them, talking about the word, are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now before I explain that, 
How do you think the devil take the word from you out your heart? He does it. Let's say Brother Chuck is teaching on healing, mm -hmm. and you don't understand that. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't grab it and, 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 and appropriate it for yourself. Right. He's gonna try you with some type of sickness. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand what Brother Chuck is taught on healing, then he'll snatch that word right out your heart, and you'll right. you and you'll give in to the sickness. Yes, right. You 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 allow the sickness to overcome you mm -hmm. instead of you getting victory over. That's how he take it out through circumstances. Right. He gonna come and say, "Let me get this word out your heart." No, he 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 apply right. circumstances concerning that word, mm -hmm. and if you don't understand it, then he he snatches it out your heart. Amen. Okay. And that's what that's what the wayside is. The wayside is the condition of the heart of those who hear the word of God, but never really gain an understanding. Therefore, because of their lack of understanding, the devil is able to take or snatch the word out of their heart. Mm -hmm. I want to read Matthew's account. You don't have to turn there. Matthew's account of this same uh, parable is Matthew 13 and 19, Jesus speaking. He said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the way. He said, when you don't understand what you're hearing, when you don't grasp what, what's being said, the, the wicked one, he's going to come and apply whatever's been taught to you. He's going to put you in that situation. And if you don't have understanding, then you're going to get defeated in that situation. That's why it's up to preachers and ministers, whoever's minister, to make sure that when they teach, they teach where people can understand what they're saying. I've, I've seen some teachers where I needed a dictionary, I needed a violence concordance, and I needed another teacher that to translate what they were saying. So they were using the It's not that complicated. You understand what I'm saying? I'm serious. We make it com man makes it complicated. It's not that complicated. God has presented it where it is it, applicable. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be applicable. We have to be able to apply it to our everyday life. If I can't apply it to my everyday life, it's useless to me. That's right. You know, it's good to teach about Shadrach and, you know, tell people about the characters of the mm -hmm. Bible and what they did, but I need to know what I can do in my situation. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? I love to hear those historical stories and, and read about Shadrach then, but what can I do? In my life, you know, I'm not facing a lion, I'm facing a bill. What do I do with that? You know what I mean? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I need to make it where it's applicable to me. <laughs> the bill of each other. <laughs> when we don't understand the word of God that is sown in our hearts, the enemy is able to snatch that word from us, causing us not to benefit from it. If you hear a word and you face with a situation and you and, 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 and that circumstance overcomes you, it's, mo it's probably because you didn't understand what was said and you were doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. yep. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't understand. That's why it's good. Don't leave until you get understanding. If right. Brother Chuck or somebody's teaching and they say something and you don't understand it, it's good to have a, 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 a pencil and paper. Write it down. You know, don't interrupt the service. Hey, Brother Chuck, hold it. <laughs> what you say? In the middle of his service, hey. Yeah, that's the right thing off the that's not, pro that's not proper etiquette. That's not proper etiquette, okay? That's, that's proper etiquette. Wait till he finished, write it down, and then go up to him at the end of the service and say, you know, what did you mean by this? Don't leave until you have understanding. That's right. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but in all your getting, get understanding. Because so that's where the victory is. Yep. Amen. Amen. So the one by the wayside, the wayside is talking about a heart that does not understand the word. Mm -hmm. So the enemy is able to come and snatch that word from him. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now the next heart condition that Jesus revealed was the rock. Mm 